today i will start with the topic spectroscopy when we talk about spectroscopy uh, we should know what are the electromagnetic waves electromagnetic waves they have the magnetic field component and electric field component which are mutually perpendicular to each other and to the direction of propagation of wave so when such electromagnetic waves they are arranged according to the increasing wavelength or decreasing frequency that is known as the electromagnetic spectrum how the electromagnetic spectrum looks like this is the region of high frequency so according to the decreasing frequency or increasing wavelength the uh, electromagnetic waves they are arranged uh, starting with the cosmic rays then the gamma rays x rays uv visible infrared microwaves and radio waves so spectroscopy it is the study of interaction of matter and these electromagnetic waves and depending on the type of uh, radiant energy radiated energy that is used it is of various types it can be uv visible spectroscopy it can be infrared it can be ir spectroscopy it can be nmr and depending upon whether you are studying the uh, emission or absorption it is of the various type like it can be emission spectrum it can be absorption spectrum or you can get continuum spectrum also now these are the absorption and the emission spectrum absorption spectrum uh, it is concerned with the absorption of uh, electromagnetic radiations and the resultant spectrum which we get that will be the absorption spectrum and uh, emission spectrum will be when molecules they uh, are in the higher excited state they cannot remain in that state for uh, longer time since it is the unstable state so they have to return back to the lower energy during that process uh, it emit energy so that energy transition if we study that will be the emission spectrum and uh, one is uh, what is called as the continuous spectrum uh, it results when the gas pressure they are highly higher generally the solid liquid or dense gases they emit at all wavelength when they are heated so this is how these three spectrums they look like that is the absorption spectrum emission spectrum and continuous spectrum now let us study the principle of spectroscopy uh, generally the spectroscopy deals with the interaction of uh, the matter with the electromagnetic radiation now when matter it interact with the, uh, the electromagnetic radiation it will have different effect for example when uv visible light it interacts there is electronic excitation when I ir radiation it interact there is rotations and vibrations when microwave interact there is rotation so depending on the type of electromagnetic radiation the sample will have different effect and when you study the uh, the transmitted light or the absorbance uh, we will get a spectra which is, uh, which is known as the uh, spectrum now let us talk about the selection rule the transitions which takes place in the molecular spectrum uh, it is between various energy level which can be the electronic vibrational rotational levels and they are governed by certain rules which we call as the selection rules and the transition which follow this selection rule they are called allowed transition and those uh, signals will be very intense and strong whereas uh, those which do not follow this selection rule they are called the forbidden transitions um born oppenheimer he separated the electronic and the uh, nuclear motions according to him the approximation nuclear motion include the vibration and rotational motion as they are very massive so the total change in the energy that will be the total of electronic vibrational and rotational level now there are various selection rules for electronic transition it is plus and minus of one that is transition will be possible uh, in transition or uh, absorption or emission in plus one level up or one level below now for vibrational transitions uh, that will be again plus and minus of 1 uh, the positive it denotes absorption and negative it tells you about the emission for rotation delta j value will be plus and 1 whereas j is the rotational quantum number again positive it denotes the absorption and negative it is telling you about the emission for rotational raman it will be 0 and 2 plus minus uh, uh, 1 and 2 for symmetric top molecules and for vibrational 
diagram in spectra it will be delta v 0 plus minus 1 and plus minus 2 where v is the vibrational quantum number now let us come to the electronic spectroscopy electronic spectroscopy basically deals with the uv visible range because uh, when matter is subjected to uv visible radiations there will be electronic excitation hence the name is electronic spectroscopy now this matter i have taken in that qubit and i'm passing uh, uv visible light so part of it will be absorbed and part will be transmitted so uh, it depends actually on the beer lambert's law that is um, the part which is transmitted or emitted it depends on two factor one is uh, uh, b and other is c that is uh, the path length and the concentration so absorbance is directly proportional to b and c or uh, proportionality you can replace by epsilon uh, that is molar absorbity constant and uh, as you know the path length is constant here we have taken one so it depends only on the concentration so you can plot a graph of transmittance against concentration or absorbance against concentration now since absorbance and transmittance they are inverse of each other so graph will be inverse so uh, with the increase in concentration there is decrease in the transmittance and there will be increase in the absorbance now let us talk to the range of uv visible spectra UV visible spectra generally uh, it ranges from 100 to 800 nanometer. Uh, uh, 100 to 200 will be far UV or vacuum UV. It is called vacuum because uh, uh, we pass uh, gas, inert gas, so that vacuum is created. 200 to 400 will be near UV, and 400 to 800 will be visible spectrum. Now let us come to the electronic transition. Electronic transitions they are de depending on the type of bonding which is present. So it can be sigma to sigma star transition, uh, pi to pi star, sigma uh, n to sigma star, and n to pi star. Now these transition actually it depends on the what is known as Planck's law. Uh, uh, greater the uh, delta E value, greater will be the that is uh, delta E is equal to h mu or delta E is equal to hc upon lambda so delta E it is inverse of lambda greater the energy of separation between the energy levels uh, lesser will be the delta value now sigma to sigma star transition it is shown by alkanes because sigma bonding is in alkane similarly sigma to pi star transition pi means uh, unsaturation it is shown by carbonyl then pi to pi star transition it is shown, shown by unsaturated compounds n to sigma star transition is shown by heteroatoms that is atoms other than carbon and hydrogen and n to pi star transition it is shown by compounds which is having non-bonded electrons and unsaturation now when we talk about sigma to sigma star transition uh, the energy gap is very high you can see this is the energy gap maximum energy gap is in sigma sigma star transition so uh, lambda will be minimum so uh, it occurs in far uv region and the example is methane which shows uh, lambda max at 121.9 when we talk about n sigma star transitions this is shown by compounds like uh, saturated halides alcohol ester amines and absorption occurs at longer wavelength in the near uv region when we talk about pi pi star transition it occurs in unsaturated compounds uh, that is double and triple bond and uh, uh, if you see the energy gap that is comparatively lesser than this so it will uh, occur at uh, higher wavelength ethylene show transition at uh, uh, 1 centifold centimeter inverse and n to pi star transition it is shown by compound having non-bonded electrons and unsaturation that is carbonyl compound for example acetone it shows transition between 270 to 300 nanometers now let us talk about the journal uv visible spectrum uh, this is how it looks like and uh, there will be shift in the absorption band caused by various effects uh, so let us these are different types of shift if shift is towards the longer wavelength that is known as uh, bethachromic shift or red shift if shift of uv visible spectrum is towards the blue um, that is the shorter wavelength that is known as uh, blue shift and if it is towards higher intensity it is known as the hyperchromic shift and if it is towards the lower intensity it is known as the hypochromic shift 
now let us go to few definitions that is chromophores and oxochromes chromophores these are the part of the molecule that is responsible for giving color and that is why it is known as chromophore uh, they generally have pi electrons though, uh, so it shows n pi star transitions and uh, example being uh, those having uh, double bonds oxochromes uh, they themselves they don't act as chromophore but when they are uh, um, their presence it shifts brings shift of absorption towards the red end example is uh, oh uh, amino group chloride group etc now let us talk about the solvent effect solvent plays a very important role in uv visible spectroscopy because it influences the peak of the compound by interfering with it so we have to select a suitable solvent uh, it should be transparent in that region uh, so uh, polar solvents like water alcohol uh, uh, they can be used they may stabilize or destabilize the molecular orbitals either in the ground state or like, uh, excited state so let us study the effect of solvents first is uh, the effect of solvent on n pi star transition if you can see here uh, let us say this is the energy gap for n pi star transition now this is uh, now we are dissolving it in a polar solvent when we are dissolving um, it in a polar solvent uh, let us say carbonyl group uh, is, it is showing n pi star transition so the, it uh, it will form carbonyl group have uh, non bonded electrons so it will form a hydrogen bonding with the polar solvent as a result uh, that uh, energy level will stabilize and it will come uh, lower in energy as a result the energy gap increases when energy gap increases the lambda value will be less so shift will be towards shorter wavelength that is the uh, blue shift it is called now let us talk about um, solvent effect in uh, pi pi star transition for example in ethene now ethene in the ground state it is stable it is not having any electron to form bond with the uh, solvent molecules only in the excited state it, it is having electron and it will form bond with the uh, solvent molecule so in excited state hydrogen bonding will be formed as a result in the excited state uh, that energy level it will go down as a result this energy gap will reduce less energy gap means longer wavelength that will be the red shift uh, let us talk about the applications of electronic spectroscopy it is having wide range of applications for example in the detection of impurities uh, in the structural elucidation of organic compound in quantitative analysis it plays a important role as well as in qualitative analysis also um, it is used in the identification of cis and trans isomers in quantitative analysis of pharmaceutical substance and in chemical kinetics